Hello, and welcome to RPG Engine. Today we're going to talk about animations. Animations are a way to set things up so you can click on something and have it perform an animation for you. Either a simple one or a more complex one like this one, which strings several together. To start with, you'll want to bring out all the items that you want to animate and have them all gathered together. That way it makes it a little easier to build quickly. Once you have them in place, you kind of want to figure out where you want to start. And here, it's best to pick a position that you know is going to be exactly what you need, exactly where it is. And that's going to be the actual lift itself at the very bottom. I've set it up ahead of time so it lines up with the rope here and lines up right there for easy unloading and loading. It does not clip anything. It's a little too tall though. We want this to be at the end of that rope up there. So we're going to shorten it up just like that. So it ends at the bottom of the rope. Bring it back down to its starting position. Now we know where it begins, we know what size it is, we know it's going to miss all this stuff. So then we just need some animation nodes. You'll find them at the top of the list if you're in all. If you are in a different tab, you don't know where they went, they're in effects. Same place as the blank invisible locator. Looks the exact same, it's just yellow, has a different function. It's still invisible to the players though, fortunately. So select your animation node. The important thing to note here for animations is that if you want a bunch of animations to go off at the same time, it is important to have them all with the same name. That way you don't have to click on several different animations and hope they key off at the right time. So in this case we're going to call this anim, short for animation, and lift. Both these fields have to agree on all of the different animation nodes that you're going to want to use. But as long as you stick to that, you'll be perfectly fine. Now that we have that, and we know we're going to need a bunch of these, I'm just going to copy it, Control c and paste several of them in place. That way they all have the exact same name. I don't have to worry about messing that up later. If I have too many, I'll just delete one. So we're going to start with this one. I'm going to click on it, hit shift and control, and click on the lift so it joins them together as a prefab. If you're curious about what prefabs are and you've missed that, I would suggest starting with that video. It tells you a couple of important things like how parent should be a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one scale because that will mess things up if they are a wrong scale and you child something underneath them. So now that they're attached, you can see it slides up and down with the animation node, you want to pick a beginning point. In this case we know where that is, it's down here at the bottom. So you click on set start. Then since this is a simple one, you just raise it up to where you want it to end, right there, and you tell it set end. Now you can see when you hit the play animation thing, although at this point it's going to reset it, it will zip it back and forth. Well obviously we don't want it to teleport, that will send all of your gear into space at that speed, so you want to give it a duration. We'll call it two seconds, nice easy number to deal with. After you do that and you click on play, there you go, it does the same thing, but it actually does it in two seconds. But we also need a rope that goes from here to there. Now the most ropey looking thing that I've found right now is freaking bamboo. So we're going to use bamboo. We'll also need it larger to start with. So bring it down till it intersects there, it stops up there, and then we give it its own animation node. In this case what we're going to do is instead of move it, we're going to make it shrink. It's important for you to pick where your node goes to achieve these things. 
because if we shrink this in the middle, it's just going to draw up towards the middle. So we want it up here near the top. It's also important to know these don't actually have to touch. I made this one touch just because it's easy to keep track of what it belongs to. But on this one, we want to be able to see where the bamboo ends. So we're just going to hang this thing out in the middle of the air. Shift control, click, make sure they're nice and joined. And then shrink the animation node and it will draw this up at the same time. When we get to there, you can see the very bottom of that rope. We know that's where it needs to end. We'll set the end this time. Grow it back out to there and set the start. Doesn't really matter which way you do it, obviously. Now we know this reaches there in two seconds, so same thing with this, two seconds. There you have your rope. But what if you want something up here that makes it look like somebody is turning a crank to make this all happen? Well, you can get this winch, stick it on there, Attach another animation node. Let's make it smaller so we can see what we're doing. Try to get that right about in the center by lining up those marks. That looks like that's pretty good. Shift control, select that. So now that we have that in place, Select the node, set start, turn it, set end, same as the others, two seconds. There you are. We'll bring in another bamboo rope thing. I'm not going to bother animating this one, but it would be nice if it kind of looks like these two things are connected. So we have everything hooked up, three different things being animated to make it look like this lift actually works. But we kind of want them all to play together, and right now they're separate. So a good thing to do is to bring in one of these blank locators, standard blank node, and select it and make it in charge of everything. Absolutely everything. Now all of that is together, you can lock this stuff, make it harder to dislodge it. It doesn't matter if you lock animated things, they will still animate. And if you decide you want to load this thing down with stuff, you can go ahead and do so at any point. Now everything is all part of one set. Now those you could leave unlocked. That way you can move them off if you want to very easily and bring some more stuff on. As long as you parent them to, or child them to this thing, then they'll move up when the lift moves up. Now that you have all of that locked and all of these things have the proper name, so now when you go into play mode, if you select anything in this set, since it's all locked, it will go to the master control. Uh, you'll notice it has the chest in there as well because the chest has its own animation. So you have control over it from here, but what we're looking for is the animation lift that we made. So you tick that. There you go. This turns, rope shrinks, lift goes up. Anytime you toggle it, it goes one way and then the other. Plays in reverse, plays forward, nice and smooth, ready to go when you are. That is your simple animation. Now to get things slightly more complicated, if we wanted to set up a series of things that run one after the other, we could use delays. So if you wanted a pallet to fall over and hit a barrel and knock the barrel off a ledge, then you'd do much the same as before. You want a master control of some sort that 
everything's attached to. In this case, we'll use another blank locator node. And the first thing that you would do would be set up your the beginning of your animation. That would not need a delay. It's going to play immediately. The next one, however, the barrel getting hit and rolling, you would want to start at the same time that this one finishes its animation. Since we have its duration set for 8 tenths of a second, then you'll have this one start at 8 tenths of a second. Rolling to the edge and then falling would require two animations, otherwise it would try to go straight down at an angle if you moved it with just one animation. So the first animation rolls the barrel to the edge, and then the second animation that's connected to the other end of the barrel, just to make it easy to find, would start 1.8 seconds. That would start its downward drop just as it started to get towards the lip, and then it would fall all the way down for an entire second before passing into the ground. And the last thing I have set up is some debris, all collected together and set with its own animation inside the ground itself. And then when the barrel comes down, this pops up at the same time. Set all of these with the same name, barrel drop, on every single one and connect them all to one item. And if all goes well, when you click it, you tell it to play. you have your little set of animations there. One thing to note is that when you string animations like that and on timers, when it plays them back, it plays the animations in reverse, but it still cycles through them the same way it did the first time, which will look very strange, as you can see. So bear that in mind, it's not gonna play those in reverse the exact same way because of how the animation works itself. But, all in all, should get you started on your own animations. Enjoy, make sure to share them on the workshop.